yay for energetics. I'm actually presenting this one on campus today because I felt like it's a nice fall morning and I thought I would come sit in front of Plumas Hall on one of the benches and record um, a series on energetics. So let's get started. We've got several tasks today. We're going to talk about defining energy, the unit to measure of energy, how energy is defined or is transferred in the animal's body, define maintenance and the basal metabolic rate, and estimate some maintenance energy requirements. That's going to be probably your take-home task from this activity, is to do some energy calculations. Let's start with sources of, well, let's first talk about the definition of energy. If you guys have been through grade school and everywhere else, and they talk about energy as that ability to do work. It's the same with livestock. It's, we're providing them with the calories to do work, whether it's growth, lactation, reproduction, performance in some other measure, that's what we're talking about, is that ability, the calories for that animal to do what it needs to do. And all living things require energy in some way to perform at their best. There's a lot of different types of energy, solar, chemical, electrical, thermal, radiant. The ones that we care about the most if from a nutrition standpoint is solar energy, that we can capture through our plants through photosynthesis, converting it into a form of chemical energy. Those are the ones that we're really, really going to be focusing on. Because that's the circle of life and the start of everything is through that capture of solar energy in photosynthesis. And so as I discussed earlier, energy is the ability to do work. And so we ask our animals to do work in a variety of ways. First thing we need to know, energy itself is not a nutrient. It's not the same as carbs, fats, and proteins. Those are nutrients. And so when we talk about energy, we may talk about energy requirements as nutrient requirements, but we have to understand that energy requirement, energy itself is not a nutrient. It's derived from the breakdown or the metabolism of nutrients, specifically carbohydrates, proteins and fats. In the body, there's this compound called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. We think of this as like our cash for the body. Okay, show me the money, show me the ATP. Some reactions in the body to do certain things cost ATP. They have a high cost. Okay, some will actually return ATP and give it back to you. So think of this like a business. And if we were thinking business efficiency, we would want to have low cost, high return production. So when we're feeding in our animals and trying to provide the energy for their growth, maintenance, and development, we want low cost inputs for calories, but we want the maximum returns. So how do we get the best value for our dollar when we're supplying these calories to our livestock? And that's what we're gonna start setting the foundation for is how our animals actually use these calories and what we can do to be more efficient with that. Okay, so first thing we need to be able to do is define a calorie. And a calorie is simply the amount of water it takes to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And so we can actually do this up in the lab. It's called bomb calorimetry. You literally put a gram of sample in a, a big steel ball bomb and fuse wire and fill it with flammable oxygen and you ignite it and measure the temperature change in the water that you place it in. And so conceptually that process relates directly to the um, definition. And so because we're dealing with big animals, even our sheep and goats are big animals, but um, for sheep, goats, um, sometimes pigs depends um, poultry, we're going to use kcals or a thousand calories. The larger livestock, we're going to use mcals or megacalories, which is a thousand kcals, just so we have manageable numbers. Because I don't think I want to say a cow is going to be eating 400,000 da 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 calories, kcals per day. 
but I can say four or five MCALs and it's easier to work with. So the smaller livestock are gonna be in smaller units, KCALs, and it may be like 3,000 KCALs, okay? And as opposed to mega calories. Animals utilize nutrients for two different functions and the, their efficiency of utilization of these two different functions is different. And so the first thing, and I think of this as a pyramid or a triangle that has a foundation. The first thing the animal has to use its calories for is going to be maintenance. Without maintenance being met, production will not happen. An animal must eat enough to meet all of its maintenance energy needs before its body will even consider production. So for example, if we're feeding some growing lambs and we're just meeting their maintenance production, we're just feeding alfalfa or something that's barely covering maintenance energy, and but we're wanting them to gain weight. We have to add some higher calorie foods to that, like a grain mix, maybe even some fat supplements, in order to provide those calories that will fulfill maintenance and allow them to move up that pyramid into production. And the further production you wanna go, the more production you want to achieve with these animals, the more you need to consider what their calorie needs are to, to reach that goal. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about maintenance. I'm gonna pick that up in the next one and we're really gonna focus on what maintenance means from a feeding perspective.